The natural world is constantly creating new and unexpected adaptations, often as a result of subtle changes in the genetic makeup of an organism. Sometimes these adaptations are beneficial to the organism that possesses them, increasing its fitness and allowing it to pass on these genes to future generations. Other adaptations don't help an organism's chances at survival and can lead to rarely seen physical traits such as albinism. Now I'm sure that all of you know what albino organisms look like and how rare they are in the wild, but did you know that there's other mutations which are even rarer than this very uncommon trait? In this episode of The Wild Report, we're going to get up close and personal with one of these ultra-rare gems of the natural world. Okay guys, Bryce just looked over here and said, Ben, there's a big crayfish in the creek. And I was like, okay, I'll go check it out. I looked down and look what we found. This is a blue crayfish. I have never ever seen one of these in the wild. I've only seen pictures or video clips of these. Oh my gosh, it's so cool. Let me get him up on the bank here. Now, blue crayfish are actually just, well, I guess it depends on where you are. This blue crayfish is actually a really rare color morph of the regular brook crayfish that we get up here in the mountains. Now, this is not a full grown adult. They can get bigger than this, but I would say he's premature. Um, now, you can look at the bottom of these pinchers, super vibrant blue coloration, and then kind of an orange tip. It's not a different species or anything like that. And I can't look up the odds right now, but I want to say that only one in every like 3,000 crayfish actually develops this blue coloration. Now, that's just because of a random mutation in the genome. There's nothing else that it really changes about the crayfish other than the color. I don't think they're any better, you know, they don't have bigger pinchers or faster swimmers or anything like that. However, it is very, very rare to see blue crayfish in the wild. Now, in some very select areas, there are actually populations of these blue crayfish where for whatever reason, the blue color has given them a survival advantage. But in this area, that is not the case. This is not somewhere that people commonly find blue crayfish. And I want to say that one in every like 3,000 is actually blue, but that is so cool to see. Normally they're just gray or brown, or like red during the fall season. That is ridiculous. Now, I'm gonna get him in some water. Uh, he's fine out of the water for several hours, but I do want to keep him moist. Then we'll talk more about the ecological importance of this awesome little animal. We got some of the water from the brook in there. If you look down on his carapace, Bryce, look how cool that blue coloration is. I mean, you can see it even better in the water. It's kind of murky water, but wow, that is wicked blue. It stands, it's so much more vibrant. You can see he's doing the little back pedal thing. But, let me get him up. Look, he's doing the, the whole nine yards. Let me see if we can get him to rest in my hands, kind of. Like this, will you stay there? Yeah, sweet. So, crayfish, guys, as you have probably seen in my other videos, Oh man, he pinched me. Well, it's okay. We'll just deal with it. Let me pick him back up. He's had a good drink. Now, crayfish, uh, as you probably remember from other videos, are critically important to stream ecosystems. They're very unique because not only can they use their pinchers to harvest animals like small minnows or invertebrates, they also feed off detritus, which is decomposing plant and animal matter that kind of settles to the bottom of a stream system. Now this, you can see, is a pretty fast flowing stream. It's a rocky bottom, it has some gravel, so there's not very much detritus, which tells me that this guy is probably more of a predator. He's probably lying in wait, kind of on the edges, waiting for a tadpole or minnow or salamander to pass by, which he'll pinch um, and then eat. But in slower moving streams, like what we have back in the Piedmont, they eat primarily detritus. So they're like a environmental cleanup crew, just like vultures on land, scavengers in the water, help to recycle nutrients back throughout the system and prevent diseases from spreading. Now, like with every crayfish I find, I have to test his pincher strength. I have not ever been pinched, I've not had the distinct honor of being pinched by a blue crayfish before. I'm hoping it's something fantastic. He's not really clamping, let me give him something better. A few moments later. No? You done? Well, he seems done. That's actually what I wanted him to do anyways. So he's a lot more relaxed now, but now that he's in my hands, man, I just, ooh, there he goes. So, uh, about a three. You can see he's pinched onto my little flap of skin there. It doesn't feel fantastic, doesn't feel awful, but that really is an incredible find. We're gonna get him back in the water. I'm so tempted to collect him and keep him, but I don't have a, 
a filter here because we're on vacation. So like, I wouldn't want him to die overnight or something because I do need a lots of oxygen. So we will probably leave him here, but that is a really neat animal. Good. All right, everyone, this has been such a cool wildlife encounter. I don't do nearly enough videos with invertebrates, but man, that was such a cool animal to see. I'm so glad that Bryce spotted this or I would not have gone over to look at it. But yeah, I'll tell you the exact odds of how rare they are. That is probably one of the rarest things I've ever seen in nature. So we'll get him back in this creek here. I guess that I'm right here in this gravel little patch. I hope that you guys can see him swim a little bit. You got it? Yeah. He's just, he's so blue, it's ridiculous. There he goes. Look at him move. Where is he going? I don't know. I think he's burrowing, actually. Oh, he's going over the rock. You have a shot? Yeah. Good. He's about to go. Bye, buddy. Wow. All right, everyone, that's just about it for today's video. I really hope that you enjoyed and learned something new about the brayfish. If you did enjoy, please be sure to leave a like on this video and consider subscribing to my channel for new educational wildlife content coming on Saturday mornings as often as possible. Also, if you haven't already, be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at The Wild Report for photos and video clips from my adventures. Thanks so much for watching, and keep adventuring everywhere. This has been Zeno, of The Wild Report, signing out.